Hey guys, welcome to Tour Talks. My name is Chris Trott. I work for TaylorMade out on the tour service in the game's greatest players. And today on this special episode, I am joined with someone who's actually on the European Tour trailer. They were the 2013 LET Rookie of the Year. They actually won on the ladies' tour and participated in the Solheim Cup all before the age of 18, before going on in 2016 to win the Tour CME Group Tour Championship on the LPGA Tour. Charlie Hull, welcome to the Tour Trailer in Europe and welcome to Tour Talks. Hello, you're right. It's pretty cool in this trailer. It's nice. It's weird for me to be sat here interviewing you and you're actually in the domain that I usually spend my time on and here I am sat in my living room. So tell us what you've been doing and where is the tour trailer today? Um, we're at Wentworth today um, on the range and it's always a pleasure coming to Wentworth. Um, it's just nice, it's good. And uh, the truck is actually there, I believe, specifically for you. Like you guys are going through some new testing of products, right? Yeah, I've been yeah, trying some new stuff um, and it feels really good. I'm really impressed with it and uh, yeah, I really like it. I got a new fruit in the back today and a new two iron as well. So it was really good. So to have the facility of the tour trailer, to have Mark Thistleton, who I believe has looked after you today with your equipment, to have a facility and a range that we can see over your left shoulder there in Wentworth, right there and work on equipment, that's obviously when I look back through your Instagram and look back through your development as a player. That must be an awesome thing to have tailor-made, to have that whole facility right there. Talk to us a bit about the process of that and what it means to you to have such a thing. Yeah, it's great because I'm quite a field player. So um, with Mark getting to see how I'm hitting the ball and with the clubs and everything, I'm rubbish when it comes to numbers and that. Like I don't understand like, the spin rates and everything. I just look at the ball and if it feels good and it, if I'm on a ball fly that I like, I'm usually happy with it and it's if it's going straight. But for me to have Mark with me to then look at the numbers as well um, gives me a lot of confidence and it's great, you know, especially hitting off the grass here at Wentworth um, and having the tour truck behind me gives me a lot of confidence because I know that we're getting the best equipment, you know, to work how I, how I need it to be. So when I spoke to Adrian Reitveld, who worked with you, who runs our European function there, works on the PGA Tour, he said to me that, have, I've obviously never met you until today, but he's like, you're really going to speak to a player's player. And like your answer there is very much a player's player. And I know that you work a lot with Belsham, who's your coach, who works on various things. And he spoke about the first time he tested with you golf equipment, you were outside, inside, outside, inside. And it was very much about the acoustics. And you've mentioned it there. Talk to us about what you're looking for and maybe people tuning in and listening, what they could pick up. Why is the sound so important to you? Um, it kind of gives you the feeling as well. Um, I'm, I think I'm quite a bit of a ball striker. So if I hit off mats, I can't necessarily feel exactly how I'm hitting it. So I'll always run outside because we're sometimes hitting off the mats when we're testing. Go out, run outside onto the grass and hit a few sneaky shots on the top of the turf because I like to hear me compressing it and once I know I'm compressing it well and striking it well and seeing the ball flight, that's when I know the club's good for me. I'm very much a field player. And when they sent me through your specs, which again, maybe we're getting a little deep for equipment people, but hopefully they can follow and understand. Your irons, if we, we don't have a standard on tour, but they'd be three degrees flat. And having looked at your statistics in terms of height, that wouldn't directly correlate to have that setup. So you actually get very shallow through the golf ball and your what we call horizontal swing plane, you hold the angles. Something like that, and you talk about feel, are you doing that to give you a certain shot shape or are you purely doing it because compression and strike? I don't actually have a clue, to be fair. I just, so I just hit it um, and they tell me I need it like that and I just go over the flow and, and do it. If it goes straight for me, I'm, I'm sound. I love, I love how innocent that is because basically having clubs set up that way really shows your ability when it comes to hitting. So you mentioned today that you picked up a new two iron. Is that something that you will use everywhere you go or just at certain tournaments? Certain tournaments, definitely on links golf and stuff. But I really like the way it flies. I actually quite get quite a bit of height on it as well. So, um, you know, I can use it in certain places in America and that. But um, I asked for a free iron today as well because I like... I always hit blades, I've never not really hit, hit blades before, and they're going to build me my free iron at blades, just so I can practice with at home, um, just because I feel like 
the harder club it is to hit and the more you strike in that well, it gives you more confidence than normal clubs. So if I can hit a free iron, I can surely hit a pitching wedge good. <laughs> damn, damn right. And, and you mentioning, I know that the products that you hit today were brand new irons, first time seeing them. We can't talk too much about the model yet, but how was that in comparison to the model that you're currently in, which is also a blade? Anything stand out for you? Yeah, I fell in love with them straight away. <laughs> and they're really good, honestly. They go through the turf a lot better and through the air, I've noticed it goes, they don't turn as much. I hit a little draw and they were still drawing, but going very straight through the air and good into the wind. And the sound just sounded a bit soft and um, through impact, you know, when you struck it, I was really impressed with them. I wasn't quite sure I was gonna like it because I'm not really a player that's into change. Like I could, if it wasn't, if it wasn't, if it was up to me, I'd stick with my clubs for about 10 years if they're going well, do you know what I mean? But um, no, I was very confident with them. I really just like them. Now that's really interesting because obviously when I have watched from afar and watched how impressive your career has been, watched how much of an ambassador and a leader for golf you've been, I watched the Solheim and saw the way you carried energy for the team. I thought it was amazing. You could feel it coming off the TV when you were watching it. Changing equipment wise, you changed 14 clubs the first time round you went through testing the TaylorMade, but you're saying that it's not something that you would inherently believe yourself to do. What can we as amateurs take from that and take from your testing and use for our own if we happen to go to a large account or to Silvermere or to the Belfry or one of these big test centers and try stuff out in the UK or wherever in the world? What can we take from, what could you tell us to help us? Um, I don't know. I always just like to see the ball fly. No matter what the track man says and what the numbers say in the track man, always trust you get that instinct with the way you're seeing it fly through the air and the way it goes through the ground but that's how I, how I always feel it as well like just kind of just you don't really know you, a golf club is a hundred percent good for you until you take it out of the golf course and test it <laughs> but um it's kind of hard when you're testing it you know in an indoor facility but um I don't really I'm not really big into how far I hit it on the track man because I know for a fact that I hit it a lot further than I do on a golf course so how straight you hit it, I suppose. I'm just doing everything by feel, to be fair. I like it, I hit a few shots, like it, like it, and put it in the bag. And how does that equate then to golf ball? Because golf ball testing yeah. is a tricky one. So how did you equate that to that? It's weird with the golf ball. I just have to do, you know, like golf kicky-ups with your club. Yeah. I have to do that to get a feel of it first, like to feel the golf ball. And I'd be doing that so I used to play tight list. And then I'd do a few of the tight list, do a few of the tailor-made. Be stood in my house actually doing it. It was weird. Like I done it for a good few days and then I'll be pitching and chipping and then boom I felt felt really confident with it it's a really good golf ball I was really surprised I saw you take part in the Taylor made bounce challenge when you were flicking it on from you to Rory oh, yeah. to I mean was that I'm used to kick yuppies I think as a junior a lot of the juniors down the golf club was wasn't practicing just mostly practicing the kick yuppies where me I was just always practicing and wasn't as good I, I can't hit I can't flick it up and hit it I can't do that it's, weird. <laughs> it's funny because we, uh, I was fortunate enough to do, and I know you're a soccer fan, football fan for the Europeans, and I was um, fortunate enough to interview Gareth Bale. And obviously yeah. there was a couple of camera crews there and they were like, Gareth, can you do some keepy-ups? Can you do some keepy-ups? And he stands there and he says, well, I'm not very good at keepy-ups, to be honest. And it was much the same. He, he obviously practiced the strike in the game. And obviously, yeah. I'm not, no Liverpool fan, I believe. And obviously they just won Liverpool. the... Yeah. <laughs> Strange to see it happen behind closed doors, right? I know, yeah. It's our luck, really. The one, the one year when the, when the fans can go. <laughs> My friend uh, had a ticket for the final, like, boy, like, ages ago. And he goes, one year when we win, can't even see it, go, and, go and see them win because of the whole virus. <laughs> yeah, crazy. So tell us, um, when we look down through Instagram, and I see a lot of people in the States that obviously follow you, were talking to me about you, and I ask people, hey, if you could ask Charlie Hull anything, what would it be? And they're really taken aback by the practice facility you seem to use at home, I assume it is. And it's obviously yeah. just like, a, it's, it's the purest form of golf. It's a pure fee. I mean, you can describe it yourself. Maybe you do a better job than me, but talk about that. Yeah, like, well, at Ketchum, where I practice, and at Wellingborough Golf Course, and at, um, where is it, uh, Northampton County, they're all grass ranges, you'll pick up your own balls, that's how I've been brought up to play, you can drive your car onto the range, 
there's not no really short moan area. It's just, um, it's all cut the same level and you just have to find yourself a, a flat line. There's only a couple of flats in the you know, um, paying. So it's completely different to America. I think they're a lot, got a lot um, easier practices to visit America. But um, yeah, it's, I enjoy it though, practicing on a field and stuff. Feels like more of a challenge, more of a grind. And to give people um, a perspective geographically, Wellenborough is Faldo's area of the UK, right? That's where he grew up. Is that right, or is he Wellenborough Garden City? Are they they're different places? Oh no, he's Wellenborough Garden City. I'm Wellenborough Golf Club, so that's in Northamptonshire. Now you mentioned the grind, and you mentioned it gives you more of a feeling of the grind. It's obvious that you're in love with the game. Is that something that you pride yourself on? The grind of it. Yeah, some of my favourite times is when I hit a whole bucket of balls and then we have to go and collect them and then just uh, if I'm hitting balls with my friends I'll just like they'll be having the golf bag you know the practice bag to pick the balls up with and I'll just like be thinning shots and purposely at them to see if I can hit them <laughs> it's just funny like collect the balls, just stuff like that I enjoy doing um, um, but, um, well, it can't take you very long to pick up the golf ball but I imagine your grouping is pretty tight yeah, I know. I try not to take too many because I know that I've got. I spend ages picking them up because the golf bag's quite heavy as well. So, um, but yeah, it's no, it's good. Or we just fire shots in different places, and I don't know. I I, I enjoy. It. I love having a practice area like that. Now you mentioned that the range is flat. Do you think that that has helped you with your wedge gapping and with the control of your yardages? And do you? My when I ever look down at LPGA or LET. The stats are quite difficult to pull out to really find stuff on players. How do you keep your stats? And has the flat range and the fact that you're hitting your own ball ever been anything that helps you build your yardages, helps you build your gapping? I don't, do I don't do stats. I don't look at the stats on tour because um, I actually hit a lot of greens. And say if I miss a green, I can still hit it to say five yards, but I might be a yard for the green, but it's a good lead, if you know what I mean. So. I've never been one for stats. I feel if my putting's off, I work on my putting. If my driving's off, I work on my driving. It's just a bit of common sense, really. Yeah. Okay. I'm and then stats. tell me how, you take, how do you take your game from that to then, you mentioned playing in the States, you mentioned you've got two iron. How do you make it, because the, the ladies golf is so international and you are very much an international ambassador of it. How do you take it around so well I just, I love playing golf in the States. Um, I feel like American golf really does suit my game. I like hitting it. You know, I like the long, tight kind of golf courses. I like the majors. The majors are my favourite. Um, I like to carry the ball. And I like to be, I'm quite good with my irons. Like, I'm good with my long irons. So it doesn't matter what club I come into the green with. I'm always pretty confident. And um, I heard that when it comes to equipment, you are into changing your own grips. You're quite finicky about that. <laughs> Yeah, well, because of lockdown, I haven't been able to like really get my grips changed. And I played the other day, and uh, I actually made a bit of a mark where I've been practicing loads. You know, on my grip, like it's the cord started coming to pieces, and uh, yeah, I had to change my own grips. It took me ages to peel off the, um, you know, the tape underneath. Um, but yeah, I just I, I got my friend to help me a little bit as well. He's a pro, so um, yeah. But when I was younger, I I actually made my own, you know, um, you know, the wooden clubs. Yeah. In my old coat, we actually grinded it down, put the you know the the, the yeah. wire around and everything. I don't know that as a kid, uh, but actually it's at home and I used to hit it. It's pretty cool. How much loft is on it? Because the thing with those, they always come out low, like a line drive, right? I can't remember. It was an old wooden head, so um, I'm really not sure. It was ages ago. I don't know. I've still got it, but it's pretty cool. And um, yeah, it was pretty interesting to see the equipment back then. The trick to the uh, getting the tape off, you've got to use the blowtorch. You use the blowtorch. I, uh, we didn't have a blowtorch, though. And because um, I was in outside, I couldn't get the hair dry outside. So <laughs> I just struggled. <laughs> jeez, jeez. So Olympics as well and golf, obviously, sadly, that got cancelled this year. But you had yeah. the experience in Rio. What was that like? Talk to us about ladies golf, Olympics. Again, this ambassadorial route, route place that you have. And I keep saying it. But what's, it's a double part question, but are there any responsibilities that you feel are on you being viewed as an icon already and an ambassador for ladies golf? Um, I don't really think about it too much, to be fair. Like I, like I just kind of go out there and just play my own game, be in my own bubble. 
Um, but it's pretty cool, like actually seeing like young kids looking up to you and stuff. But um, you can freak out a little bit as well because, like, I don't know, um, being yourself and if you get a bit angry, you don't want little kids like looking up to you, thinking, oh, they get angry and you know, they like expressing yourself. But everyone's human. But um, yeah, I've never understood like why anyone would want to like look up to me. But looking back, I've had a pretty good career and being an Olympian and everything, it's quite inspiring for young kids. What advice would you give to people? Because I mean, it's more than pretty good. It's when I look down and what, and just to the research on you, I mean, you're one of the best players in the world already. You mentioned majors. The way in which the people that I work with talk about you as someone who practices with their equipment, listening to you and the core of you as a golfer, you're a bit more than pretty good. Do you know what I mean? So it's like, what advice could you give for youngsters out there to go on this route that Charlie Hull has gone? When they're younger, just hit as hard as you can. And if you go, play with the men, play with the boys, because they hit it further. It makes you hit it further. Um, and that's what I did as a kid. Just go out there and have fun as well. Don't take it take it seriously, but just, just go out there and have a laugh and play a lot of uh, games, you know, even if it's for a chocolate bar after a Mars bar or stuff like that. Anything that gives you a little bit of pressure, that's what I used to do as a kid. And I heard that uh, Tyson Fury was in your dream foursome. Is that? Yeah. yeah why, cool. why that? Why Tyson Fury? I mean, obviously... I love, I love boxing and I, I think he's a pretty cool guy. Um, but yeah, I just, I, I like him. I think he's really cool. I like him. He's a great guy. And who else made the dream foursome? It changes all the time, to be fair. Obviously, Seve, Tiger Woods, um, Rory. And I look back as well, you know, like Ben Hogan and that, that that'd be pretty cool. Yeah, interesting. And uh, you, so you mentioned the Wooden Woods, you mentioned Ben Hogan. Are there any yeah. golf things out there that you try and model your stuff on or you just have admiration for the work ethic? Um, I don't really think about it too much. Just hit the golf ball. I love looking at all the old players in the game and everything. I like Ben Hogan's swing and I like Sam Snead's swing. Um, it's pretty cool. And I guess it's... Hard. I love Seve as well. Yeah, definitely. I guess it's hard to talk about ladies golf as a certainly as an English girl and not mention Laura Davis, Dane Laura Davis. Have you had any interactions, questions? Has she been any role model at all? Has there been any role models on the ladies golf circuit who've helped you on this journey? Um, no, Laura. I've got with Laura since I was younger. I played my first pro tournament with her. Well, as a professional, and I came second that week. But I've always got on with Laura. I think she's just such a cool person. I always used to look up to her as a kid as well. She's just got a lot of flair, and she's a good ball striker. Um, but now nah, I just think she's an awesome person on and off the golf course. And uh, final question for you. It seems that when I look at, again, your Instagram, you're quite into you're quite the chef. Are you? Is that something that you've done for a long time? Oh, yeah, I tell you what, I'm a top chef. I, I love cooking. I'm, I make a good Sunday's race. Um, I do, um, but no, I, I think I'm, I've got a lot of flair in the kitchen, so I'm a, no, I'm, I'm, I'm a good cook. My, my place is the place to be on a Sunday. <laughs> it, must be, it must be hard being on the road then, you must miss cooking. Yeah, I do, I know, um, it's, that's the thing in America, like, uh, you're always on the road, just eating out in restaurants and stuff, but I'm not complaining because I don't have to do the washing up after. But I've got a bit of a, I'm a bit of a clean freak. I've got a bit of OCD. Like everything has to be clean at home, and like I get the Hoover out all the time. You know, <laughs> clean the throw after everyone's mess. But I enjoy it. It's just nice to be a bit have a bit of a normal life as well. That's why it's quite nice. Like we've been home for all these few months. It's the first time I've done this since I've turned pro. That's about six seven years ago. It's the longest I've been home. It feels a bit more like a normal life. It's quite nice. And what uh, did you take advantage of that by learning new cooking stuff? Or what did you do during this time at home? Doing loads of 5K runs because going back at the beginning of it all, I couldn't run more than 100 yards. I hate running, but I just started doing loads of 5K runs. And then I did like a 6K, 7K, 8K, 9K, and then up to 10K now. Just been doing loads of fitness. I've always been into my fitness, but um, just before lockdown in like February time, I just got too skinny. Um, because I wasn't really going to the gym. So over these last few months, I thought I might as well just uh, get into my fitness and uh, not bulk up, just build a bit more muscle again. So it's been working. And is that a home gym routines and anything? Uh, yeah, just running. I've got a spin bike at home and I don't do weights. I never, ever will do weights. I just do band stuff and 
body circuit stuff like burpees and ball slams and stuff and sprints in the garden. So it's stuff that we can all do even ourselves. Yeah, yeah fantastic. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's awesome to have you as part of Team TaylorMade. Like I say, for me, the energy that comes off as a golfer is inspirational, certainly to me, and obviously I'm sure to everyone else out there. Thank you very much for taking the time to talk to us. And what's the schedule looking like for the next, for the remainder of the year? Well, we've got a meeting, uh, it's like a Skype phone call meeting with the LPJ Tour tomorrow, so we'll know more about it. But some events coming up in the following week, so hopefully we'll be able to get out there and play. I just can't wait to get going because I feel like I'm hitting it pretty well and um, just go out there and have fun. I just love playing golf. To be fair though, my time off, I've been playing some wicked golf courses. So it's been a bit of fun. I think it's obvious that you're in form with the win the other day as well. Congratulations on that. Oh yeah, yeah thank you. And uh, hopefully the new clubs you've got can bring more wins and we'll see you uh, stateside here when, as and when time permits. Yes, spot on. I know. I'm looking forward to it. Thank Fantastic. you. Thank you and uh, good luck. Cheers, thanks.